You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video, and by Utech, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Hey guys, it's John P, and I'm here with Miriam. Hello, How are you? I'm well. How and, are you? And you are here with our continuing live coverage of CES 2015. We're going to actually learn all about it. Yes. From the man behind it. The man. The there's, man, there's Gary, one man, Gary the Shapiro, man. who is also, also a Geek Beat reporter on occasion. Did you know that he's actually done awesome. he's done remote reports for us of from, from various locations? That's true. I'm he's happy to be an unpaid correspondent. <laughs> yes. Oh, so you get the same budget as the rest of us, which is basically <laughs> nothing budget around here. Zero. So you know. Well, Geek Beat is so cool. Just the uh, you have a halo effect on me that makes me seem like I'm cool even though I'm not. Like you guys <laughs> dress cool, look at this. No, you I Corporate love, America. Oh, okay. Actually, you're, you're I'm dressed the sharpest of all three of us. That's true. Sure. You got a sweet suit on and I'm digging the purple not, shirt. Yeah, actually. the 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 combo pink it's shirt, nice. purple tie. Yeah, it takes it takes courage when you're from Texas to wear a purple it's shirt, nice. right? <laughs> I was thinking about that when I was on the big keynote stage. I'm probably offending half the countries in the world up here wearing pink as a guy. No, 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 no not at it's all. classy. It's the way to go today. Well, from you guys maybe. So, thank all you right. Geek Beats here. The show is official. Tell us about the show this year. Yes. How is it going? Tell me about registrations. How many people are here? How many exhibitors are here? You always have all the stats, and it, I don't have any of them until you tell us. It's bigger all than right. ever. We're at the end of the first day. Yep. We're almost there. Are we? No, I don't know. I don't know what time it is. I have no concept anymore. We are already the largest show we've ever had. It's uh, over 2.2 million net square feet of exhibit space. Last year we were at 2.05. Wow. So we've grown over 150,000 feet. We've grown over 100 exhibitors to 3,600 exhibitors plus. Wow. And in terms of attendance, we honestly don't know until the show's over and yep. then we audit. But our pre-registration has been very strong, especially uh, internationally. Last year we had a really bad weather on the East Coast. Yeah. We're doing okay. We have some minor issues on the East Coast this year, but nothing major. So, and it seems crowded. People are busy. Yeah. It's been very busy. Now, one of the fun things, and before you leave, if you want to try one or if you want to take one around with you, you see over there, I don't know if you can see behind Callie. Yeah, Callie's over there, by the way. She's slacking off while we work. Uh, you see there's little scooters. No, not the food, the scooters. <laughs> we have these Eco Rico scooters. They're amazing. And we've been riding them around. They go like 20 miles an hour, and I can't, I have to get off the property before I can go because the crowd is too, like, yeah. can't ride my See, scooter. I don't do that. See, the, the thing is all the CEA staff, the, the organization, the Consumer Electronics oh. Association that runs the show, we are in a challenge. So, like, we always take the oh. long way around now, and I already just got my 10,000 step reward. What are you what wearing? Are you wearing? Um, it's, I'm covering oh, the brand. Trying, yeah, I, but I, the, I think we got it, though. It does. It, it's a member of ours and an <laughs> yes, exhibitor, of which is important. But So you're, you're tracking your, your steps. Yes, and, and my sleep. Doing? Well, I already hit 10,000 steps today, and wow. but I, I understand that the, the, the leader among us is our IT guy who's a marathon runner, and he's doing 20, 25,000 a day. I did 23,000 yesterday. You did 23,000? Steps yesterday. That was the busiest day for the media yesterday. You weren't just going like this, were no, no, you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know they have a monorail it's, and they have cabs. So no, no, but it wasn't saying. any walking between events. It was just walking at events. That is impressive. That's great. Yeah. That is good. Well, what, and what we have here that's different is we have a lot of categories that have grown very quickly. So 3D printing, um, drones. Drones. Just off the map, I, totally. I have not I have not gotten to go explore yet, so. Neither I, have I, I'm I, just saying yeah, what okay, people yeah. tell me to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah So, uh, <laughs> I, and the automobiles, obviously, I, I participated in three major events by three major auto I companies. I saw you at already. Audi this morning, I covered it. I was at Audi, yes. For Android Central, yeah. Yeah, that was great, and uh, Ford, and I was in the Mercedes first ever their big thing in unassisted driving. Yeah. Oh, wow. And they had, or automated driving, yeah. or autonomous driving. Uh, they put me in a concept car they created for CES, which did amazing things. You got in the car, and you let and the I, car they, drive you around? They dro it drove me onto the stage where they announced it. Were so. you nervous about that? Not at all. I was like, this is the coolest it's thing in the world. I'm just sitting here. It is Mercedes. So Why would I be like, nervous? What's yeah. going what's, what's to happen? The, the funny thing is they set it up like as if I was coming from Area 51, driving in a lot, and they had it all set up with a video. Oh, oh wow. And a lot of people thought I'd actually driven in from Area 51. You should have rolled with that. 
I did for a few people, yeah. but it seemed cruel, actually. Yeah. You really believe that? Come That's on. That's awesome. No, That's but, it, but it's, um, and the I, features they had on that car were phenomenal. They, I, I won't even go into them, but they, they tell you things about people in front of you. They tell the people they can walk across. They tell the car behind you there's someone in front of you. The screens inside the car were gorgeous. It was just, it was so cool. The future is cool. I have it seen is. one of the possible futures, and it is cool. It is and cool. it's at the show. And obviously, we're, we have categories that have grown, like we have new ones like sports technology, the wireless health has grown hugely. Yep. Um, Ultra 3D, uh, you know, going to some of the big like LG, Samsung, Sony exhibits is just, it's a sensory experience. I mean, you're they blown have away. 8K sets, several now. How many? 8K sets, 8K. Oh, so oh that's okay. this industry. They're, we're we're showing things before we've even seen them. I know, I know. Unbelievable. Let's see, a 4K is four 1080Ps and an 8K is Four, it's four K. Double the height again. I don't know what you do. I think eight Ks. Uh, I'm saving mine for when oh, I yeah. get to heaven. That's but you what know, I do. two years ago, you guys had one eight K set from Sharp. This year, you have several, like quite a few. So it's amazing to me. Like it's actually maybe you know you were just getting settled with Ultra HD. You know, it's amazing that we're showing products that we cannot yet sell while we're just selling products like four other. Yeah. Which are, we're actually the, at the fourth quarter. These sets went off the shelf. I mean, they're doing great. So one of the things that uh, that I'm really excited about is the the convergence, the way all the technologies are coming together, and you know the way you described the the drive the uh, self driving car experience earlier. You know, it takes a lot of infrastructure to do that. You've got to have devices like wearables on people so that it can monitor people and have geolocation and Bluetooth awareness and things like that. And then all that information has to be fed to some supercomputer in a cloud to yep. process it and then feed it back to us in a way we can consume it, right? Um, not to my knowledge, but <laughs> it, hey, that's your alternative future. Oh, okay. Mine is actually where you have cars that, that are ability to, to recognize things. Um, there's like increasingly sophisticated uh, processing chips which could distinguish between a person and a tree, for example. Yep. There, obviously, you, you embed in there the existing maps and things like that, and then it's just the differentials that matter, but it is incredibly fast parallel computing, but it's cars dealing with, talking to cars, making decisions as to which car will move and things. I mean, there's a lot of things which have to happen to make yeah. it work, but I don't think it has to go into the cloud, personally. I think that- But I don't know, yeah, you're smarter than I am, actually. No, no. You, you know how to design knives and stuff, and I don't. And no, you're no. smart and cool and- <laughs> Whatever. No, what and, you're, I, and you're taller and you I, have more hair. I mean. Not much. I agree with you. The, you could probably beat me up. Too. The way that the, way that the uh, car infrastructure works, yes. But what I'm also thinking is, the way that, what happens when we get out of that car and we take that yeah. uh, uh, that interaction with us throughout the day, you know? When yeah. you go into the office, for example, um, if your car is that smart, why not have your office be that smart? It just recognizes you through proximity and your Bluetooth key or some kind of Oh, security. sure, I so think. So you walk in and your door is unlocked well, once they know, you. Once they know who I am, I mean, yeah. and, and like chairs or, car seats will tell me that I'm likely to get you, sick right? unless I do something soon yeah. and take the chicken soup or the vitamin C or whatever. That would be awesome. Or they assess it. Or as uh, we have a, a new CEA book out this week by our economist, Dr. Sean Dubravac, who should be on your show. And he talks we about we're heading towards predictive technologies which focus, that's what the future is. Yeah. It's really about your focusing on your data and telling you what's going to happen in a way which is customized towards you. And that's where the future is in terms yeah. of technology, services, all sorts of things. And now we're producing a lot of data without a lot of ability to analyze it or use it. Right. That's right. That's our number one problem. So, what else do you have going on big at the show? You did a keynote already. Yes, I did this morning. Do you have any more keynotes you have to do? You know, tomorrow I have the privilege of interviewing one-on-one -on -one the chairman of the Federal Communications Commission. Wow. wow. Who will be determining single-handedly whether he bows to the pressure of the President Obama who <laughs> did something no other U.S. president has ever done and basically told him what to do. Yeah. Um, even though it's an independent agency and the President has appointed all five commissioners. I, I take it you don't agree with that particular approach? I don't agree with you. I, I, well, what he said, the president's a citizen and he has the right to have an opinion, there but generally the president's fair. never done that before. Not only do I not agree with the approach, I, I, the analysis is on both sides has been so weak on this net neutrality issue. So one side is saying, my God, everything must be free all the time and everything is equal and don't ever stop or block anything. And on the other hand, they're saying, we could do whatever we want because we paid for this thing, it's our pipe, we paid for it. Yes. Well, where I think the, the middle ground really is, 
look, we want people to build new pipes, we want competition, we want consumer choice, but pornography is not as important as healthcare information going down those pipes. Some things are more important, and if there are fast lanes, and they're super fast, maybe someone should pay for them for a reason. The question is, how do we bring the entire country up, yeah. make sure everyone has fast, affordable internet? And my view of the world is the way you get there, you get intense competition, yeah. and you get investment and you have companies fighting each other, because where they're like, in my area in Virginia where I live, yep. I have a fiber optic Fios, but I'm with the cable company sitting me like every other day saying we're better, and Fios is better, and then Wi-Fi jumps in, and there'll be, you know, opportunities yeah, to- Wi-Max and everything yeah, else. So, yeah, so we want competition, yeah. and that is, that is what we advocate as an organization. A lot of broadband providers competing with each other, and that way everyone can get us moving around really quickly, fast on the computer. Yeah. Speaking of innovation, How's your book doing? Well, the Ninja <laughs> Innovation book has been uh -huh. out for a while. It was on the New York Times bestseller. It's still selling. It's actually being made available to every CES attendee for free as an audio book by courtesy of Amazon. Wow, oh, I didn't know, cool. that. I didn't know that. I don't yeah. think I was supposed to announce that yet, actually. <laughs> well, I just blew are it. Are you reading it? it? Unfortunately, they took, that, would be cool that, that wasn't an option. Oh. When, it, when the audio book was made, uh, I, I like listened to the different people with the good voices. Did you get I should have hired Jones? John to read Whatever. it. Whatever. <laughs> Did you get James Earl Jones? That would be so sweet. I don't want to insult the guy who read it, but not only do I never remember his name, but I've never heard it. Oh, okay. But that's how my wife read it. But everybody's going to be able to get it. How are they, I mean, you're not even supposed to talk about it, I guess, but do you know, like, how can people get it? Like Every CS attendee is going to get an email saying, if you want oh, this book, uh, go, go to Audible it. and go get it. Oh, that is super, sweet. super sweet. I'm looking forward to that. Okay, are you working on any new books? Um, I'm not sure, honestly. Okay. <laughs> Our goal was to get out this book by Sean Dubravac. I wrote yeah, the forward right, to right. it. It really is focused on the future. It's uh, it's about the internet and, and what it's doing and, and the, this new digital era. It's a it's a great book, and it's it, he takes hard positions on where we are going with technology, and I like that because either in ten right years now? it'll be wrong. It's out this week. You could buy it right here at CES. Okay. It will be available, on, I think, on the tenth of January, but you could probably order it online immediately. It's Sean Dubravac. Look and, it up on Amazon. And the book by <laughs> Sean Dubravac is called Digital, Digital Destiny. Destiny. I knew that. Digital Destiny. Cool. Gary, we know you are an incredibly busy man. We love. I can't believe you. Ca you're coming back twice. You're yeah, coming by to wrap That's up right. the show. Well, I'm running out now because I'm introducing Brian Krasanik, the CEO of Intel, and yeah. Intel is going to have an incredible keynote introducing a whole range of technologies. So, so I want to know one secret. As the man behind CES, how do you get around? I know you're obviously trying to do as much walking as you can, but what is your way to get around when like, we're suffering through the cab lines to get from here to the Venetian stuff? Like, do you have like a special chauffeur with well, like a Well, first of all, I know a, secret a I've been doing this, <laughs> I've been here enough. for 30 years. I spent almost uh, eight months of my life in Las Vegas. You I know the secret passageways. Yeah. Plus, I am a runner. But the truth is, a, a few years ago, at one of our board meetings, after the, one of my board members saw me waiting in a cab line for an hour, uh -huh. he said, I move that we get Gary a car with a driver. Nice. <laughs> nice. And that was Eddie Hardenstein when he headed direct, nice. or, direct TV. TV. Yeah, now he's the head of the LA Times, and I'll never let him forget that. I said, thank you for getting me a car with a driver, which has so sadly spoiled my wife. It's yeah. like, she likes it now. Yeah. I can tell you that as a journalist, a tech journalist who's covered the show since 2007, that it's grown, it's incredible. It has and, grown. And, and you know, like, unveiled two days ago, I, I have never seen it this packed. I was blown away. It is, it is cool. So we do have this new app. No show has ever done this before. The app actually not only has all this, everything you'd expect, but we'd actually put these little beacons all around the vent. It has a mappable interface. It allows you to plan ahead, really? and you can know exactly where you are in the, the all around the show, so people get lost. But obviously it's plan ahead is yeah. what we tell people. And what I, the secret that I, all right, uh, don't listen. Right. So this <laughs> yeah. is what you do at any event that's crowded. I do this when I travel, even around the world. I go to the front of the taxi line. Uh-huh. I don't front. cut. Okay, yeah and I yell out my destination. And That's then a good idea. You end up sharing a taxi, getting there quicker, and spending less money, and meeting someone, and networking, and establish, networking yeah, in a random way, which is part of the value of events, I serendipity. It. I love serendipity. Okay, you guys, you learn something every oh, day. Gary Shapiro is always you're not teaching supposed to us do that. new stuff. That was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, Gary, we're going to let you go, Thank but you. later on, you and I are going to have another push-up competition, okay? 
So <laughs> just get ready. Inside for that. joke, push up comedy. Get ready for that. I would do uh, that. <laughs> Thanks. It's Thank you, fun. sir. Thank you very much. It. All right, guys, stay tuned. We got a lot more coverage coming at you here from CS 2015. <laughs> that was Gary Shapiro. We'll be back. Hang in there. Later's.